If there's something we know about earthquakes, it's that they cannot be predicted. But this is not a valid reason to just give up. Thanks to the progress made by geology in recent decades, we can now explain why they happen, and we are also able to identify regions where one could occur. Countries like Chile and Japan are sadly famous, or infamous, because of past earthquake events that caused devastation to their lands, and California is crossed by the San Andreas Fault. No, we're not talking about GTA. We're actually referring to a fault that could produce an immense earthquake, the big one, as they call it. But what if I told you the big one is nothing compared to what could soon be unleashed a bit north, where the Cascade Range is located? Forget the big one. It'll be a big one upsized, something the locals have already dubbed, with shameless pride, the really big one. The Cascadia Subduction Zone First of all, how are earthquakes produced? Scientists know that the Earth's crust is made up of a composite of tectonic plates, large portions of crust, and to a small extent also the upper mantle, that continuously move alongside each other, like pieces of a giant puzzle. In addition to the 20 main plates, there are also microplates, which are smaller in size. Well, the regions where tectonic plates come into contact with each other are called the subduction zones, where the smaller or less energetic plate tries to escape collision by diving beneath the larger one. When they come into contact, that's when we get trouble. This hidden threat is where tectonic plates like Juan de Fuca and Gorda are colliding with the North American plate, sliding beneath it. A recipe for a major quake shakedown. Cascadia, whose Spanish name refers to the volcanic mountain range of the Cascades, extends inland and parallel to the coast for a length similar to that of the fault. And this entire region is now believed to be capable of producing earthquakes of magnitudes of 8 or 9, as devastating or more so than those unleashed off Indonesia in 2004 and Japan in 2011. These plates, like slow dancers, are steadily moving towards each other, locked in a collision course. They're currently in a tense standoff, building up energy. One day, that energy will explode, unleashing what might go down in history as the greatest natural disaster in the history of North America. Terrifying, right? But why aren't we talking about it more? Well, blame it on Hollywood's catastrophic depictions, like the iconic destruction of Los Angeles and the fact that places like Oregon and the Canadian border often fly under the cultural radar. Now, let's dive into the backstory. Before the mid-1980s, folks believed the northwestern Pacific coast was only at risk of tsunamis, triggered by faraway earthquakes, giving us ample warning. Local tsunamis were not a big concern. Why? No written records of such events, and people thought the Cascadia subduction zone couldn't produce massive earthquakes. Honestly, they didn't even know it existed until 40 years ago. The last major quake occurred when the Pacific coast was still inhabited by Native Americans who, lacking written records, didn't leave a trace. Settlers saw the land as fertile, temperate, and seemingly benign, not realizing the danger lurking beneath. Before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. A seismic history to unfold. Fast forward a century and a half, and only then did people catch on that the northeastern Pacific was no tranquil paradise. It took another 50 years to unravel its seismic history. Clue 1. Geography. The most powerful earthquakes worldwide shake up the Ring of Fire, a volatile belt stretching from New Zealand to Chile. Think Japan in 2011, magnitude 9.0. Indonesia in 2004, magnitude 9.1. Alaska, 1964, magnitude 9.2, and Chile in 1960, magnitude 9.5. It wasn't until the late 1960s, with the rise of plate tectonic theory, that scientists explained this fiery trend. The ring of fire is a ring of subduction zones. So here we are, standing on the edge of a potential cataclysm, armed with knowledge and a history lesson. In the Pacific neighborhood, most earthquakes happen when big land plates like North America get stuck against ocean plates, such as Juan de Fuca, and then suddenly break free. Volcanoes, on the other hand, pop up when ocean plates slide beneath continental ones, heating up and pressurizing the rock above until it melts. Now, imagine a gap in the ring of fire, the fiery belt of seismic action. Surprisingly, the northwestern part of this ring seemed quiet, but was it really?
The mystery got cracked open in Japan, where ancient documents gave insight into a massive wave hitting their coast. This mysterious wave, called the Orphan Tsunami, had no known origin. Fast forward to 1996, and the plot thickens. It turns out that on January 26, 1700, a colossal earthquake of magnitude 9.0 shook North America, causing the Orphan Tsunami in Japan. Native American tribes had passed down stories about the earth shaking and massive ocean waves, initially dismissed as legends. But they were the real deal. Thanks to Japanese records and Native American tales, we now know that at 9 p.m. on January 26, 1700, the Cascadia Fault along the western coast broke apart, unleashing one of the world's most powerful earthquakes. The resulting tsunamis raced across the Pacific to Southeast Asia. Now here's the kicker. It wasn't a one-time show. Geological evidence shows that this disaster has repeated itself around 41 times in the last 10,000 years, occurring at unpredictable intervals. So buckle up! History tells us that the Cascadia region has a seismic story to tell, and it's not a one-hit wonder. When a mighty earthquake shakes things up in the ocean sea, it triggers a flow of mud and sand along the edges of continents and into submarine canyons. In the deep seas, these core sediments called turbidites make their way across the abyssal plain. They're like fingerprints standing out from the usual fine stuff that gathers between major tectonic shindigs. By dating the fine particles using carbon-14 analysis and other methods, we can pinpoint when significant earthquakes rocked the house over the last 10,000 years. Now for some math magic. Divide 10,000 by the 41 recorded earthquakes and you get 241. That's the Cascadia recurrence interval, the average number of years between each earthquake. And here's where it gets nerve-wracking. It's long enough for a whole civilization to set up shop along a continent's riskiest fault line, but not long enough to kick back and relax. It's been 315 years since the last earthquake in this 241-year cycle. Now let's talk predictions. Recurrence intervals are like averages, they say. It could be the average of 9 and 11 or 2 and 18, but recent geological forecasts are giving us the jitters. A 37% chance of an 8.2 magnitude earthquake within the next 50 years and a 10-15% to chance that the entire Cascadian subduction zone could crumble with a whopping magnitude 9.2 event in that same time frame. So while numbers dance and averages fluctuate, it's a reminder that Cascadia's seismic story might not be over. We need to stay alert. Can't hold it anymore. There will come a time when the comprehensive movements of the plates become impossible to sustain statistically, and it will be at that moment that the North American plate will bounce like a spring. After that, we can only imagine what will happen. A mega earthquake, rocking a magnitude greater than nine will send shockwaves racing across the entire Pacific Belt from the subsistence zone. First up, seismic waves hit the coast, packing a punch between 7 and 8 on the Richter scale. The northwestern edge of the continent, from California to Canada, takes a dive, sinking at least 2 meters and shifting westward from 10 to 30 meters. It's chaos. Older buildings crumble, bridges collapse, landslides wreak havoc, and the ground itself goes into liquid mode through a phenomenon called liquefaction. Imagine solid ground turning almost liquid, swallowing everything in its path. Now here's the watery climax. Some of this displacement happens below sea level, stirring up a colossal amount of water. A massive surface wave rises, forming a giant hill, then crashes down. One side rushes westward toward Japan, while the other creates a liquid wall heading eastward, a thousand kilometers of liquid terror reaching the northwest coast about 15 minutes after the earthquake kicks off. It's a race against time as waves as high as 9 to 12 meters, or possibly up to 30 meters depending on the models, surge in, invading up to 20 kilometers inward in many coastal areas. In a blink, the coast transforms and the window to escape is painfully tight. Hold on tight, because this seismic story is about to shake things up. Risk Assessment In the Northeast Pacific, a whopping 360,000 square kilometers are at risk. 
home to major cities like Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, Eugene, Salem, and Olympia, with about 7 million people currently residing there. When the next major rupture hits, this region is slated to face the worst natural disaster in North American history, rivaling the 2010 Haiti earthquake that claimed over 100,000 lives. To put it into perspective, the 1906 San Francisco earthquake took about 3,000 lives, Hurricane Katrina claimed around 2,000, and Hurricane Sandy nearly 300. Now, brace yourself for the Cascadia forecast. An estimated 20,000 lives lost, 40,000 injured, and a staggering 2 million people displaced for months. These numbers might sound comforting compared to the devastation in more densely populated areas, but are we just at the mercy of these events with no way to fight back? Well, rewind to 40 years ago, when the awakening of the Cascadia Fault became apparent. Back then, we had no clue about minimizing the impact of the tsunami. The wake-up call finally came in 2004 with the Sumatra tsunami. Local and U.S. authorities kicked into gear, implementing a sophisticated defense system based on real-time satellite detection of sea level changes. For the coasts of the United States and Canada, scientists at alert centers can now issue initial warning messages within five minutes of an earthquake. In the case of the Cascadia Fault, this means a 25-minute warning for the population. It's not a long time, considering we're talking about the really big one, but it's progress. So while we may not be able to completely dodge the disaster, at least we're learning how to throw a punch back. Hey, that's all we have for you today. What would you like us to cover next? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and stay tuned for our next videos. I'll see you on the next one.